everyone! So, after a long, far too long period of time, I have finally finished watching Gossip Girl. Yes! <laughs> and, um, well, I've been asked here to answer some questions. It's gonna be kind of like a series review, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I so. feel like it was like, you, you think I'm like, pulled you in as a witness or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay. I try to tell the truth, the whole truth, and I'm like, just help me Gossip Girl. <laughs> no, some just like general season series review questions. So All right. Like you said. Let's do it. All right. All right, so the first question is, I don't think I've actually asked you this, and I don't think you've actually told me, but do you like the series? Did you enjoy it? Oh, okay. It's not at all. <laughs> Um, there were some down points for sure. Um, I don't really love what happened with some of the characters. Yeah. But overall, I, I think I like the show. You think you like the show? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's I the don't know. answer you're gonna get out of me. Yeah, because honestly, I'm like, wait, she hasn't ever actually told me she liked the show or enjoyed it. And I'm like, I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions like this where it's like favorite and least favorite. Okay. So. What was your favorite and your least favorite season? I figured episode was too oh, narrowed down. Yeah, I, I'm season. trying to remember the, the season arcs of the particular ones. Okay, so I think my least favorite was the one with Lola and that whole thing and, you know, uh, Ivy pretending to be Lola and all that. Like Season five. Season five, <laughs> yeah. It's so not great. <laughs> no, I just was like, oh my god, can someone just kill her? <laughs> like, that was what I actually yeah. wanted to have happen. Or like, someone like, see her use her credit card and be like, that's not your name? <laughs> like, just something like that. No, the actress is just so bad, I wanted her to die. Yeah, like, yeah, like the character <laughs> is okay, but the actress is so... Yeah, I didn't mind so... the plot so much, but that season definitely didn't feel yeah. the same no. at all. Not to interrupt, um, just aggressively agreeing with you. <laughs> I think my favorite season, well, I'm going to put a middle one in there, is the one where they pretended they were going to go to college. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> like, they were like, we're going to do this for like five episodes and then screw it. This like is interesting. Like when they start college, right? and it just disappears. And then everybody's like, Serena, you have to go to school. And she's like, no, I don't. I'm Serena. You'll all catch up to me. I'm the trendsetter. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So. Um, but my favorite one has to be the one where uh, everybody thinks Serena's a murderer. Oh, yeah. That whole thing. <laughs> where, I mean, she kind of is, but like, isn't. That was, that was my favorite. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay, similar. What's your favorite and least favorite character? Um, so my least... So I, I'm torn because I want to do like underutilized characters where I'm like, no more! But like, that's not a bad character. Yeah. I mean, I will never look at Rufus the same way again after sleeping with uh, Ivy. Oh, um, it's so gross. Right? It's I'm like, so everything about this is wrong. The only thing that could have been worse is like Serena or Lola. Because that would be worse. It's just disgusting. It yeah. bothered me so much. No. Uh, so, okay. So worst character... I think I'm gonna have to throw out all the characters that are like gone from the show by the end of it because yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't really They don't really impact overall. Yeah. Um, and I, like obviously they're all terrible people, so like we can't do it based on like character no, qualities. No, literally no one in the show is a good person. Right? <laughs> like the best people are Serena and Nate and they're not good people. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, mm. like Nate's a total hypocrite and Serena just like goes off the rails way too often. Yeah. She's too, she, like, she really is a good person. But she definitely is so quick to like, people don't like me, I'm immediately going to go to drugs and disappear. And I'm like, it's not really yeah. a bad person, but... No, just bad at like, being a healthy person. Yeah, I feel like I need to state that. Like, she's not a bad person because of that. She's also very quick to do whatever she wants. Like, I don't yeah. care if you're married. I want you, because I know what's right. That's where she's not a great person. This is hard though. Least favorite character. Um... Like, who would you be likely to skip an episode if you're rewatching? She's like, oh, it's based on this character, I don't want to watch this. That's how I decide. <laughs> I mean, I want to say Diana, but like, obviously that's like two seasons or three. And, and I'm she's like, fun. I feel she's, like she's fun. She's the only one having fun besides Georgina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth Hurley definitely like, uh, that role. I'm like great. so trying, I'm so torn. I think I'm going to say Dan as my least favorite character. I just, I hate his smarmy attitude and his stupid face. I thought for sure it was going to be Ivy based on everything you were just saying. Uh, that's that's the thing. Surprised. Like, I wanted to pick someone that was in the whole show. Yeah. Like, one of the main cast. And I don't consider Ivy important enough to be the yeah, worst no. character. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Dan Smarminess. Yeah, Dan. I just, I hate him so much. So much. Like, you remember, I was watching the show with you, and I was talking about how much I hate all the Humphreys. No. <laughs> especially Dan. No, and literally the whole time I was like, oh, no. <laughs> It's, what you're it's so his show, though, and I know that, and I think that's definitely making me somewhat biased, because I'm like, oh, just... I just don't want a show about these people centered around Dan, but I also can't think of anyone else who, with whom it would be an interesting yeah. perspective. You also were so funny when you realized that you were just female Dan. Right? <laughs> You're like, ah! Oh. Uh, <laughs> you always it. hate yourself on shows. Right? Next Gen included. <laughs> I don't like myself. I don't know how to make this clear to you. I don't understand why you're with me. <laughs> I don't like me. I am not likable. And if you do a video of all your good traits. Oh God. That, that'll that be like your birthday present to me. Like you'll just put it up on my channel. <laughs> just like I you ranting about. I think you actually leave me over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd delete it. I would absolutely delete it. I'd make, make it private. Like that's what I would do. Right, who's your favorite character? If you're Lisa Reed Stan. <sighs> I want to say Chuck Bass because he's just so. So great. Chuck Bass. So <laughs> like, a great character. Right? I mean, like, the first episode was obviously problematic, but, like... No, like, my friend and I, who were, like, obsessed with this show, we both agree, they kind of just, like, retconned a lot of what happened with season one, Chuck Bass, was they realized he was sticking around. It's kind of a... Let's, let's just pretend that wasn't as bad as we thought it was. <laughs> and I feel like if you disregard that... Like, yeah. he's a terrible person, but he's a great, great character. And I'm also tempted to say Georgina... But again, she's not in every episode, and she's like a rare treat. No, but she's in all seasons. I think she could count. Mm. I think she's pretty close to Maine. Yeah. She was part of like that final, you know, bitch Avengers that was She created. was not in season one. I thought she was in season one a couple of times. No, I don't think so. I could be wrong, because I, I usually binge it so much. Even though I check right now, I guess we could cut out me Googling. Yeah, we always do that. <laughs> yeah, Georgina first appears in season one, episode 15. Huh. Desperately okay. Seeking Serena. All right, all right. So you can count her if you want, I think. I, I just, she's the only one having, like, fun the whole time. No, she's, she loves that character. Right? It's so obvious. It's so, it's like, she totally <laughs> enjoys it. But I, I don't think so. I think, I really don't want to, I, okay, so Blair, I'm over. I'm like, I'm sorry. I know, I know. <laughs> I think the last season being so Blair focused was just hard for me. Yeah. Um, Blair's 100% my favorite. Chuck Bass being right underneath, but I almost can they're, they're like one person in my head. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess that really only leaves Serena. Or Nate. No. Nate's, <laughs> Nate's the mayor. Mayor. <laughs> Youngest mayor, Nate. mayor ever. Like, oh if God. he wins, <laughs> I like to think that's like he's crushed in the worst lane. Like, <laughs> yeah, like Dan revives Gossip Girl or someone else takes it over like or something and just rip him to shreds. <laughs> like, oh. Just the list of everyone he's like been paid to sleep with. Like yeah. it's revealed that he's a prostitute. Um, I guess I'm going to have to go with Georgina. I feel like it's Georgina because every time she's on screen, every you're like, time, it's like, Georgina! Yes, yes. Finally, some so real stuff is happening. Georgina. Yeah, exactly. You always get so psyched. Yeah. I would be psyched and also mad because I'm like, things are going to go bad for people. Yeah, like. but, but that's that good. Fun. Like, yeah, no, you know, sure. it's, it's, it's fun to see the characters you know in conflict and she brings the conflict yeah. everywhere she goes. You want to see people get tortured on that show. For exactly. Sure. Like, you for want sure. them to hurt. <laughs> I'm excited because I feel like you're going to be very torn between two for one of these answers. Okay. But your favorite and least favorite hookup. Oh, God. Okay, well... <laughs> Not even relationship, but like, hook up to a relationship, anywhere in there. Yeah, some, uh, some one-night stand or anything. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think my least favorite has got to be Rufus and Ivy. It's so gross! I, I didn't know it was going to be Dan and Blair, it was going to be Rufus and Ivy. But it's almost worse with Ivy and William, because it's like... Oh, you really mean this. Yeah. Oh, that's so much worse. Like, at least Rufus, like, it legitimizes being like, oh, you were just, like, using him and just using Just something about, like, seeing her leg go over Rufus makes me oh, throw up. God. Every time I literally I want to throw up every time. I literally time. stopped watching. I was like, nope, I'm going to be on my phone for ten yeah. minutes. Literally, whenever you were, like... You were like getting closer to it. I'm like, you need to finish because I need to know how much, of, how upset you are over this. I need to know how bad like, this uh, You know, okay, I get it. She's an adult, and that's it's okay. Yeah, she had just basically been his daughter, right? right? That's, that's the that's, thing. It's like the emotional as intimacy. His daughter, basically. It's yeah. So gross, no. and he's so much older. 
Uh, and like just I, I understand the psychology of it even because like this is the person that screwed over his wife who he was mad at and like I get it it just it makes me really regret my season one crush of Rufus oh yeah no because like season one I was like you are a dad and you are cool and you're a musician you've got the floppy hair and you cook you I'm in love with you forget everybody else and then by like season three, I'm like, oh, never mind. You're pathetic. Yeah, You're yeah. literally pathetic. <laughs> yeah, and even the characters, like, I think even the actor's delivery kind of makes that a problem because he's so direct and so like on the nose with everything and not particularly great at being yeah. in the moment. I feel like he keeps playing it as like season one Rufus when he's not anymore. Yeah, it's he, weird. he like it's tries to retain weird. this sense of identity from that time period. Which I get the character would be doing, but he doesn't pull it off very well. No, exactly. It's not very nuanced. No, exactly. Uh, so that's my least favorite. Um, it's so gross. <laughs> uh, I keep like wanting to do the OTP thing of like these characters are so meant to be together for my mm -hmm. favorites, but uh, it's so mixed because every time they actually have something good happen with the characters we want to see together, something horrible happens yeah. immediately after, like Nate becoming mayor. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly becoming no, mayor. No, it's what happened. But it's clearly set up to being he's going to win, and I'm like, no, please, yeah, this is no. stupid. Even on this show, it's so stupid. <laughs> I almost want to say Vanessa and Dan because they were also clearly meant to be. Yeah. But I also hate Vanessa that much that I'm like, no, you can't, you can't. Um, who else? <laughs> Definitely not Eric and Damien. <laughs> Um, See, for me, this, like, wouldn't even be a question. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, a, a close second to my least favorite was Blair and Dan, because I'm like... That's what I said. I knew no, it was going to be between those two no, being least favorite. Yeah, no, it's just I'm so viscerally disgusted by Rufus and Ivy that no, I can I don't know. Something about it is, like, oh. they had very, like, familial chemistry. And it's like it's right there at the end of this show, and I'm like, oh, it it's too raw. It sticks. Oh. Oh, no. Think about happy, happy. Happy, happy. Who made you happy to see them together? Who were you like, yes, this, keep going. I mean, I was so rooting for Chuck and Blair because they're so terrible and I, I'm so they're so happy together yeah. and those characters are terrible but like when they're happy it's it's nice and I think it's gonna be those two. Good. I'm like if you don't say chair, I don't think we can be together. <laughs> <laughs> like, chair right, the ship like, names. It's like my OTP forever. I shift them right. so Right, I was like thinking Serena and Dan and then I thought Serena and Nate because it'd be funny but like... Yeah, Cass and I were always like, Snape has to be a thing because they're both honest. I and, like two Hufflepuffs need to come together. Can I say a theoretical one instead? Oh, of course. Nate and Chuck. Nate and Chuck. Because here. oh my God, there is no way on earth those two have not no, slept together. No, they definitely slept together. Absolutely. At least in, like some kind of confused orgy type thing where they <laughs> both had like. I mean, that is girls. sleeping together technically. I'm, yeah, I know, yeah. but I mean, even if they weren't aware of the fact that they did it, if they don't remember it the next day, they definitely have. There's <laughs> no way. Like they're both so sexual that they're and they're both so open about it. Yeah. And neither of them is homophobic in any way. They are not opposed to the no, idea. No, neither one of them care at all. Yeah, Like, exactly. they're both completely comfortable with it. There's no way that Chuck, at least, hasn't slept with other guys. I, He's I even really said so. I really don't believe that. I thought he did. He yeah, did. I thought he did. Yeah. And Nate, I wouldn't be surprised. But, like, there's no way that at least, like, very intimate contact didn't happen during, right. like, like, things. Like, they have sex in front of each other. I 100% think so. Like, they do not hide stuff from each other. So... Something has happened. I mean, Chuck Bass doesn't hide anything. anything. That's kind of his whole thing. Would you actually prefer, like I'm actually saying, Chuck and Nate over Chuck and Blair? No, because we don't get it canonically, because the world wasn't ready for it. It was too beautiful. Okay. I see how about you. I see how you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, as long as Cher is still it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I always accept a non-canon gay ship, so... I mean... It's not it's queer being if thing. it's actually realistic for those characters. Like, yeah, I feel like they would definitely do that, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no way they have it. Okay. Favorite and least favorite plot? Okay. I think I already got into this a little bit. My least favorite plot was everything to do with Ivy and uh, Lola. That whole thing of just like, oh, well, she's gonna pretend to be... You know, I'm like, I don't care. I don't yeah. care. Shut up. Someone figure this out already, please, God. Like, 
Ah, oh, no, I hated the whole thing. Yeah. I, especially the, the fallout and the aftermath and all that. Just shut up. And I think I said that my favorite was the uh, the whole plot where Serena, like, murdered somebody, yeah. basically. Um, it feels like... Because it felt like there were real consequences there, and it was, like, late enough in the show that the characters knew who they were in that whole thing. Yeah. And, like, it was perfectly timed, perfectly executed. Georgina was involved. Like... See, that's why Georgina is definitely your favorite. You light up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like I have a slight answer to this, but I'm curious. Are you satisfied with who Gossip Girl is? No, <laughs> because I hate Dan. That's what I was thinking. Like, <laughs> of course not. Like, I knew it was him because, like, and especially when Vanessa found his manuscript, I was like, because he was edging out into doing yeah. this kind of thing for a while, and I was like, there is no way that he's not trying to go legit at this point. Like, I kept thinking it was him. I kept thinking it was Eric. But like he wasn't on the yeah. show enough anymore, and I was like, well, this kind of can't be. I thought it was Vanessa. I was definitely again, in the Dorota camp for a while. The, for a little Dorota while. I was like, maybe sense. it's Dorota. <laughs> right. But like the whole like gossip girl thing, I was like not thrown by that at all. Yeah. I was like, this is just a pseudonym. And that's why I thought author, because I'm like, who the hell else on this show has the patience to write this much? Yeah, yeah. To be this invested. It has to be Dan or Dorota. Yeah. Like Dorota was definitely a good possibility, <laughs> you know? Um, I had some really exotic theories too, like Blair's mom, you know? But I'm like, she's way too uninvested in the whole situation, but that could be a front, you know? Like, um, and when Diana was brought on, I was like, eh, maybe, but the tone was wrong and all that. Like, it just didn't seem like plausible to me. Yeah. But um, Dan is the only one that makes sense and I understand that it was always gonna be Dan because it's his damn show and he's perfect and I <laughs> I'm gonna end up bleeping <laughs> you know I'm pissed when I'm sorry when I start having to bleep myself yeah but like I hate Dan so much and I get that the show would not even exist if it weren't for his character being that lens in yeah. he's, he's the one that brings us into that he's world supposed to be us he's basically. supposed to be the grounded one for us yeah and I'm like I just want to kill you <laughs> the whole time so no I'm not satisfied because I hate Dan but I understand, literary-wise, like, why that makes yeah. the most sense. I, I did love it because it's like, I know it's supposed to be romantic, but it's so dark and creepy at the same time. I'm like, you are such a creep. And I just love that whole layer added on. It's like, no, I've just been obsessive about you since high school. Which we knew he was anyway, but it's just another layer. It's so creepy. Right, I'm like, this is some dedication right here. It's really like, fun to rewatch. He never that pulled way. back when he was getting what he wanted. It's, you know? it's so fun to, to like watch whenever rewatch after you know and see everything. Because yeah, you see sometimes when he like kind of pulls back and when he does not and what his limits are and what they're not and when he does it for revenge and it's like, oh, you worse than all these people. <laughs> I also thought it might be Jenny at one point, but yeah. like they wrote her so hard out of the show that I was like, there's no way. Yeah, no. But like, I would love that idea as well because like, Jenny being like, I tried and failed and now I'm bitter and I'm gonna go after all of you and yeah. like that whole thing. But like this person was way too invested in Serena specifically yeah. for it to be anyone other than Dan because no one else cares about Serena that much. Yeah, it was like all oh, sorry with Serena. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, was like, it was like either that or it was gonna be Nate and then they had the whole plot with like, you know, Gossip Girl talking to Nate and that whole thing yeah. and I was like, well, yeah, okay, so it's not Nate. I do love the really obvious stuff looking back like, Serena meeting with Gossip Girl and Dan shows up. And it's like, oh, Dan, why are you here at this time? And I had a note of those kinds of things mentally, and I was like, huh, why would Dan even, and I said this at the time to you, why would Dan know to go there? Yeah. Why is no one questioning why Dan just shows up yeah. when Gossip Girl was supposed to meet? No, they do a really good job, I think, of like making the obvious clues for him seem too obvious, so you disregard them. Yeah, exactly. Which is really was, clever writing, I Exactly, thought. you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting show in that regard because there's one arc that runs through the whole show but they really just don't care about it until yeah. the very end. Right? right? Do you think Serena and Blair are actually friends? <sighs> I think they're emotionally invested in each other. I think they care about each other in some capacity and they won't like let go of each yeah. other. Um, I'm gonna say yes. I just think they're really bad at being <laughs> friends with each other. They don't know how to do like, it. Like they literally don't know how to do it. Yeah. They're the opposite of Chuck and Nate. Yeah, valid. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think they are. 
I think they care about each other, and I think that's the basic mode of a friendship. Yeah. They're just really bad to each other sometimes, and friends do that, you know, yeah. not to that level, but, you know, they keep coming back to each other, and that's sort of my sign. Yeah, no, I can see that. It reminds me of the porch problem from How I Met Your Mother, and I'm like, they are definitely on the porch together. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, they almost read to me more as family than friends, and that yeah. way that, like, you can hate people in your family, but... Yeah, and that's, like, the weird thing that's born out of this show, is that it is very much a show about families. Yeah. More than it is about, like, friendships and, like, gossip and those kinds of, yeah, like, high like drama. Yeah, it's almost family choice on top yeah. of it. Exactly, it's like family of choice, exactly, because these kids are all, like, living in this situation which is not torture, by the way. <laughs> It's not like Aladdin up in here. But it is still bad. It's like right. mostly yeah, they, 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 You know, and Shen... Like, Chuck, it starts off with Eric, like, trying to kill himself, you know? Exactly. Like, so Chuck's whole arc kind of reminds me of Logan from Gilmore Girls, mm -hmm. where, like, he's kind of being forced into this role that he doesn't necessarily really want to take. Yeah. But, like, he also is fine with using it yeah. for his relationship with Blair and all of that. And that's sort of a Logan thing, too, like the whole Birkenbag thing and hooking her up whenever she needs to get hooked up and yeah. all that. Like, he uses his influence for his own gain in that regard, certainly. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of that for some reason. I can see that. Uh, similar, do you think Dan actually loves Serena? <sighs> I'm going to say that if it's not love, it's some weird level of obsession that needs to be dealt with. Definitely obsessive. Right? right? It's so creepy. I think it is born out of a place of love, but I'm not sure if it's like a healthy love. If that makes sense, like, he loves her, but he might love the idea of her more than who she actually is. For sure, is. and it kind of bothers me that she felt that that level of obsessiveness made everything he did okay. Like, but look, look how obsessed he's been with me since high school. I'm like, that's right. just creepy. I don't think that that even was realistic for Serena as a reaction, because I feel like after everything she's been through, she'd be like, this is not love. Yeah, I feel like that was like early season Serena might have been that way. Yeah. Maybe, but I really don't think so. No. Because she always thought that Dan saw the better in her, but Dan really just wanted to be a part of that world. Right, exactly. He was much more interested in being part of that world than her specifically, but she was his in. Yeah. You know? Because like, she'd be nice enough to accept an outsider. He she definitely didn't care. He used her in the sense of Gossip Girl and all of that, and for his own emotional edification. But, like, I, uh, I think... He, okay, so here's the thing. I think he thinks he loves her. Yeah. I don't know that I find Serena's reaction of loving him back plausible, especially in later seasons. In the earlier seasons, it kind of makes sense when they're in high school and it's all new and everything. Like, I kind of get that. Well, and she loves him as the outsider, like, yeah, like they do that's, have a lot that would work together. Right, and they, he is intellectual and so is she, and yeah, that kind of Yeah, he recognizes works. that she's smart, and so yeah. she loves being seen as something other than just a socialite. But... All he really wanted was a socialite, I feel like. It's very fascinating. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, he loved this idea of her so much more than, like, he loved her. It's so creepy. I don't know. It creeps me out. And I was very hardcore, like Dan and Serena. I shipped them very, very hardcore for a very long time. It's clearly what the by show the last was... season, I'm like, I don't know anymore. Yeah, like, it's I want clearly, to this. It's clearly what the show wants us to ship. Yeah. But, like, Chuck and Blair. <laughs> no, Chuck and Blair are everything. Like, I, I'm 100% on board with them. I'm so yeah. hardcore on board with them. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten two answers from this already, but we'll see. What is something you wish happened that didn't? I wish that Ivy had been hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, or thrown off a roof, maybe. Yeah. Um, something I wish with better music in the background. Than <laughs> oh my god, the music in that it's scene, though. so bad. It's so bad. It's terrible. I'm like, where did you dig this out of, it's like... so bad. <laughs> oh my god, like, I think they were going for, like, soap opera level drama. Yeah, it was like a, a 60s spy movie almost, because right. it was kind of fun. Weird but really choice. Jarring, nothing like the music of the show, unless it's one of Blair's dreams. It was right. very, very And jarring. that's sort of, like, it's sort of surreal, that whole scene. Yeah. So maybe that's what they were going for, but it just took me completely I out of the moment. I really think it should have been no music, or, like, their typical music in the background. Yeah, I wanted, too. like, city noise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which we never scary. hear in this show very much. Not very much. And like, that would have freaked us out, but in a natural way. Right? It would have been like, oh, Can wait. You hear how far away the cars are and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could have been much better that way. Um, so something that I definitely want to have happen was, was Chuck and Nate, like, canonically. I figured. You know? <laughs> um, 
And again, it's, it's not queer baiting. I really just think that those characters would have been together in some capacity at some point. Yeah, no, for you sure. Know? They definitely would have, just casually. And it would add a layer to their dynamic because, like, they live together. It's, you know, it's a yeah. little vague what the relationship actually is. I think it would have just been very casual, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm fine with that, too. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, sometimes I sleep with Nate. Yeah, he's, you know? he's there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, like, it's not an issue, it's yeah. just, I kind of wanted to, like, have that canonically because I feel like it's there and not explicitly said. Yeah, no, That's I basically agree. it. Like, I, they just never hit the nail on the head. Yeah, because I just kind of assumed that they just don't remember. And they're clearly okay <laughs> with gay characters because we have Eric and then half the, yeah. like, half the male cast that doesn't stay around. They all just go off into gay land together, it's fine. They're at a Pride event and they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what else, what else? Um, I feel like I told you all of the things I wanted to have happen. Exactly, that's what I mean. I feel like I already got my answer. Like, it's like college and Chuck and Nate. Well, I, you know, honestly, the whole college thing, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. And I remember saying that to you at the time, because I was like, I feel like they're both good. All these characters are going to have to, like, do all this work. And it's going to totally take them out of the city and apart from each other. And it's not going to work. Like, I just thought they're all going to be at Yale. And I was really psyched for that. <laughs> See, but that would have been hard to believe because like Yale is so exclusive to get into, but they're all such rich kids. Like it's possible. And if they all wanted it, you know, our like, schools around there. <laughs> okay. Maybe everyone goes to Yale, but Dan. <laughs> and they're all just like, why is Dan always at Yale? <laughs> He's stalking Serena. Right? right, exactly. Oh, okay. Big things. What is your favorite and your least favorite thing about the show? Oh, uh, least favorite thing about the show is the existence of Dan Humphrey. <laughs> um, okay. So, actual least favorite thing about the show is, like I said, the whole arc about Ivy and Lola and all of that. I just the sister and everything. Yeah. Like, and then CC dying and everything. Just stop. Stop. Like, and I also didn't like that they put an actual number to the amount of money that it is because it makes the show kind of dated. Yeah, you know? I agree. Um, because of the way that money changes over time and yeah. everything. But like, it's also a very of the moment kind of show. Like, you kind of had to see it within like 20 years. Yeah, because there's so many like people that are part of that social scene and trendy and musicians that are right. trendy. And it's even very now, like of the moment. Even now, watching it with you, I had to be like, who is this? Yeah. I feel like they're putting this performer on the screen and I should know who it is. Yeah. But I don't. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's very much a timestamp, which is yeah. kind of fun. I like when shows No, exactly. That. And like, I think that's fun when shows kind of just own that. Yeah. You know, whilst trying to have a timeless theme. It just you know? means that 25 years from now, some kids are going to be obsessed with that time period, which is kind of a fun thought. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, I was meant to be alive back then when Lady Gaga was popular. <laughs> It'd be great. Yeah. Of course, Lady Gaga um, will still be popular, but... So, I guess my least favorite is that whole arc. My favorite would probably... I, I mean, it's just... This sort of ties into the seasons, because there's a season arc. Mm -hmm. So, that's the same thing I said earlier, which is the um, the arc with uh, Serena's a murderer. It doesn't have to be plot. It could be, like, fashion or music or acting. Like, anything you want to. Like, your favorite thing about the show in general. Uh, I think I found it a little hard to believe that they were having a party every week. <laughs> like, I get that it's, like, Manhattan Socialites yeah. and that's, like, the thing. Yeah. But I just was like, uh, I don't know if I find that plausible, actually. Yeah. And they go to every single one and they all get there by, like, that's, like, every episode is basically, like, we're all scattered off doing our own things. And there's a party happening that only Serena's going to, and we're all going to meet there, like, somehow through weird circumstances and, you know, things that just it's happen in the universe. It's a little contrived. Yeah, exactly. Favorite thing about... Uh, another of my least favorite things is how incestuous this group is. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone has hooked up with everyone. <laughs> when you're digging the bottom of the barrel for Ivy and Rufus, like... <laughs> Come on, everyone, it's just, it's so blah. Like, yeah. we need fresh meat. Even if they're just there for like a, like three episodes in a season, just be like, oh yeah, this is my partner or whatever. And that's what they tried to do with Serena at the end. And like that whole thing just blew up. And yeah. I was like, oh, his daughter? Okay, fine, whatever. Um, I think I really like how self-assured all the characters are and how self-actualized they all are. Because mm -hmm. they're like, this is who this kind of person is and like I can describe someone as being like Nate or like Serena like they're very they're distinct very personalities yeah. while being diverse enough to be plausible as humans 
You know, like the only one possibly exceptional to that is Chuck Bass. <laughs> but like, I also know people like Chuck Bass, you know? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, his name is Charles Fish. <laughs> Charles I'm just, Fisher. I'm just like, can I meet this person? Also, I love you. <laughs> no, I mean that I know, like, I would love Chuck Bass in real life. Smarmy, overconfident, yeah. kind of like, but not put on like it is with Dan, where you're like, you have no confidence and you're trying to look confident. No. And it's completely transparent. Well, because he tries, although he doesn't care, but he cares. Right, Chuck exactly. admits he, cares he cares more than he anyone, and that's what Vanessa calls him out on when she finds that manuscript. Yeah, and Chuck, like, actually doesn't care, and then he has the things he does care about, and he's very sincere when he cares. Right, and Chuck is more just aloof than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Like, he cares when he does, he makes it clear when he does. Yeah. You know? Final question. Final question. And it's, it's fiction, you know? Would you be a part of that world if you could be? I think I sort of have your answer to this question, which is like, I'd rather, if I'm going to have all the same problems that I have today, I'd rather do it at a penthouse and a beautiful dress. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's really, that's sort of the point of the theme of the show, is that like, these people have the same kinds of problems that all of us do, but scaled up to match their yeah. level of living. It's more documented. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You know, like... They don't show, like, struggling to, you know, pay bills or anything. That's sort of a very different problem. Unless but... you're in Nate's whole homeless phase. Oh, God, I, I forgot that. about that. That was a good plot line. Yeah, it was. It just was like, can we get back to the real show now? <laughs> I loved that plot line. Yeah, no, it was good. It was really good. It made me love Nate. It made me really mad over Nate was all furious with being cheated on because I'm like, can you be more hypocritical? <laughs> right? You have no leg to stand on here, child. I was very mad. Oh, you know, actually one of the things I wasn't totally happy about was um, the revival of Chuck's father. Mm. I was like, we've done this relationship already. He's gone to therapy about it. Like, it was so over the top that I loved it. I was like, yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Give me the ridiculousness. <laughs> it's absurd, that's for sure. And they clearly were building up to it for some time. Like, there were signs. Well, and it was nice to see Chuck have to actually get over his dad and not just forced to because he died. And then the rooftop scene. Yeah, and then he did actually die, but Chuck had to get over it before then, too. He had to actually realize, no, you're an awful person. I don't want your approval. And that's just it. I, feel, I think death. that rooftop scene would have gone very, very differently if Chuck, like, hadn't gone through all that emotional processing. Yeah, because season one, Chuck would have saved his dad. Absolutely. Would have done anything. Would have pushed Blair off to get to his dad, you yeah, know? And exactly. he literally chose to let his father die. treated her for a hotel or yeah. his father. He just, he no longer needed his dad's approval. So yeah. I really think it was good to bring him back to let him actually finish his growth fully in a way that we don't That's often get true. Real life. I just, oh, that actor. I don't like him. He's convincing. I, He's I believe so him. He's so Lex Luthor. I kind of love it. Yeah, it's just so <laughs> over the top. Lex He's Luthor very is exactly villain, but I kind of dig him just, I feel like he loves being that villain. Well, so does Georgina. Exactly. It's kind of that, but like, you know, the white male version of it, where it's like, oh, I just have to make a little face and I can make anything happen and not get my hands dirty. Oh. Yeah, the Thorps were a little bit, like, annoying to me. Yeah. That whole arc. Yeah. Yeah. Raina and, uh, what's his name? Uh, I cannot remember his name right now. Uh, Russell? Yeah, I think, I think it's so. Russell. Russell Thorpe. I'm yeah. terrible at names. I'm the worst with names. Yeah, that arc was like, but at least it was short. It was over in like a season. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. So I like the show, I swear. <laughs> I know, you just, I was like, what's your favorite, least favorite thing? Here's 17 least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always easier to remember the stuff that's bad than like the stuff that's good for me, at least. I mean, I don't know. I could probably spend 25 minutes just talking about the dresses and makeup. Oh yeah, no, like. I could go off about this show for weight, which is why I didn't answer the questions. I would go off about it. For, I mean, if you ever want to interview me on it, fine, but just know it can be long videos. <laughs> well, we can do that on your channel. That's true. Yeah. I love Passive Girl. Of course. I know it's ridiculous, but it was a guilty pleasure for a long time, and then I realized I didn't feel guilty anymore. <laughs> well, like, I mean, I'm like, you, now I just love it. <laughs> I don't care. You make a good point. Like, you know, it is very Shakespearean. It it's right. really is. It's like highbrow and lowbrow at the same time. It's high class, low society. Yeah. Cass and I call it intellectual guilty pleasure. Yeah. Because you don't have to get all the references, but it's better if you do. It's like um, Gilmore Girls in that way. You don't have to know everything, but if you are a pop culture freak, it helps. Mm -hmm. Same with this. If you're like an art and fashion freak, 
oh, it's so funny and so great and so ridiculous, but you don't have to, you can just enjoy the drama, but you can get that extra little layer where you're like, you're clever writers and you're very well educated writers and also let's bring back people from the dead. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> I love You're it. Right. And I think that's where we're going to cut this off unless you've got anything else you'd like to ask me. No, it's, uh, those are my questions. I probably could ask more questions but I gotta cut myself off at some point. Okay. Unlike how often I rewatch the show. Netflix will stop me one day. <laughs> that and Gilmore Girls. And, and friends. friends. Yeah. All right. Well, that is all for this video. Thank you for stopping by. I'll be back again next week with another video that I hope you'll find interesting. Until then, XOXO, XO, 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 Gossip, Gossip Girls. Girls. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're so cheesy, I love you.